what are the challenges faced by women in computing? Well, the sad thing is that in most countries in the world, women are still a minority in computing. Um, I wrote my first paper about the lack of women in computing in 1987, which is now 23 years ago. Um, and the situation in the UK hasn't changed. If anything, it's got slightly worse. It's very disheartening. Um, there are some parts of the world where uh, women are encouraged and enjoy computing. I recently went to Qatar mm -hmm. um, and 80% of the computer scientists uh, in the University of Qatar are women. Uh, but there's lots of interesting reasons for that because a lot of the men can study abroad and the women can't. There's all sorts of deep reasons. But they, they, uh, women I spoke to really loved what they were doing mm -hmm. and wanted to do computing. Somehow in the um, uh, Western world, in the UK, the US, a lot of Europe, when uh, personal computers emerged in the 80s, uh, they were seen as toys for the boys. And we never really got away from that. You have to, go, you have to want to do it so much that you, you uh, somehow persevere beyond uh, what your parents advise you to do, what your teachers advise you to do, um, and the, the, the um, uh, so the challenges are, are the fact that you, you're so often in the minority, and society has this picture of computer people as male geeks, mm -hmm. and a lot of women are not interested in you know, being part of that sort of environment. The industry is very, can, can be very male dominated. And so all the way along the line, women sort of drop out of, of doing it, even though they might be very interested, uh, because they just perceive it as something, it's, it's just too hard an environment, that it's not for them to survive in. Mm -hmm but to be themselves in. There are lots of, lots of challenges, and I, I think that, um, you know, I, I find it so sad that in our undergraduate courses here at Southampton, we still have such a small number of, of women on them, and those that are, uh, the women that are on the course are often from outside the UK, which is, is you know, like, which is great for um, people, other countries send us their women, and we're not, we, we, don't, we don't seem to find ways to get women interested in computing in the UK, uh, in the US. Um, and why is it hard to be in the minority? I think you have to be a very strong character. You just have to be a very strong character and be really determined that this is what you want to do. And, uh, you know, the resistance, uh, not the resistance, but the uh, sort of hurdles you have to get across easily defeat you if you have all of that sort of strong if you haven't seen a role model that you want to, you know, copy your... Have you seen any differences between when you first started and today? Well, as I said, I, I think in, certainly in the UK, the situation has got no better. And if anything, the statistics show slightly, um, it's slightly worse in terms of... Uh, if you look at the number of people working in IT in the UK, uh, there are less women than there were before. We see no increase in our undergraduate courses. Um, I'm very privileged to have a lot of women around me because we, we get a lot of women postgrads applying here from other countries. So, But in terms of differences, the, 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 the sad thing is that the world has changed quite a bit in terms of opportunities for women since I started my career. I often tell the story that my first job interview, I was told I didn't get the job because I was a woman. And that was in 1977. Wow. It was a temporary lectureship in mathematics, which I went there. And I was actually told that I didn't get the job because I was a woman. Um, that was before we had equality laws in the UK. They couldn't do that now, even if they thought of it. Uh, you know, the world has changed a lot. Uh, every country is different, every culture is different, and there are many, many stories. The more I travel the world, the more I see the differences. But 
certainly in, in uh, my world here in the UK, there's a lot, you know, young women today don't think anything wanting careers and when I went to university uh, it was assumed that you would go to university, get a degree, work for a few years and then get married and have children. That was the assumption um, and the thought of career was not, not the norm by any circumstances. That is now the norm. Young women expect to have a career. Of course they still want marriage and babies if that's you know, what they want to do but, but they expect a career as well. Um, and I think it's very sad that can, you know, other subjects, um, you know, and there are generally more women in engineering. It's not huge numbers, but it is better. Mm -hmm. uh, but computing, it's still, the numbers are just so dismal, and I find that a bit disappointing. <laughs>
Um, so, as it often happens, and uh, the two women who were on the course, we, we survived and did very well, and because we persevered, and uh, yeah, I, and, and what got me through was having someone to talk to. There was a female lecturer on the course who I used to go and talk to. How can lessons from this be used to encourage women to the rest of the computing field and to improve studies for women in Southampton? Well, uh, how, I think that um, we haven't succeeded very well at Southampton, but the key thing is to create an environment that women are comfortable working in. We've got ECS women, um, uh, it's, and it's very important to make pe women feel that they're not, we don't want women to feel that they're odd or different because they're you know, in this minority. Um, we want them to make them feel there's a network of people like themselves that they can sometimes relax in. I mean, I'm going out tonight for an all girls dinner and we all like to go out sometimes uh, and have a bit of fun in, a, in, in a, uh, not in mixed company. And, um, and I think uh, that I believe strongly in networks. So mentoring and networks. I've always belonged to networks. I've always found the women's networks because I, it's supportive. Mm -hmm. It's not that I want to be constantly talking to only women. I'm very part of. I'm part of. Uh, sometimes you need the support of your peers, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I'm, I'm a great believer in networks. But I really support ECS women, and I'm. That's. I. I, I really keen for our students every year to go to Grace Hopper. Mm -hmm. So they experience, I mean, the, what, the wonderful thing about Grace Hopper Conference is 1,500 women talking about computing. Mm -hmm. It's very, very mm -hmm. motivating. I heard three good things about it. It's so. fantastic. And it's, you know, I, 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 we are the only UK university that sponsors the conference to the uh, top level of sponsorship. We, we send students every year, so. So, um, why do you recommend people to study at the University of Southampton? Well, Southampton is one of the best places in the world to study computer science. Mm -hmm. you know, we're right at the top of the tree in the UK, and I like to think we're pretty high up there worldwide. Uh, we have great international connections. We have some fantastic, um, fantastic research stars here at Southampton. And we also pride ourselves in the excellence of our teaching. Uh, and I hope that's the, I have to look to you for this, I hope we get very good student feedback. Um, I know there are always things that people aren't happy with, but jet, I hope the students are happy with the experience they get here. Uh, I think we have a very interesting degree. Um, we're very creative about what we do. We like to be you know, we're ahead of the game. We've in fact created the web science um, discipline. Uh, it's been very much being led from here, as well as MIT. Uh, and um, you know, so we're constantly pushing the edge, um, giving so the students get something different here that they wouldn't get uh, in other places. 